What do I know about Woodville? I know that Woodville has been around for 100 years, 100 years celebration. I know that we're named after Samuel Woodville, who was a general in World War I, I believe. I, I'm pretty sure of that, and I should know more as the principal, and I've worked here my whole life, and I apologize for that. But um, he was a courageous, brave leader and uh, won the Medal of Honor and was named, our, our school was named after him because of those attributes. He was an admirable man not politically correct in today's terms. He was a soldier. You know, he was not well educated. He never went to college, um, but he was a sharpshooter, an expert marksmanship. And the way he earned his Medal of Honor was to clean out three German machine gun nests in one day. By the time he got to the third machine gun nest, he was using the butt of his rifle in a garden hoe. These documents came from our time capsule that was in the old building. Um, students, teachers, community members put stuff into this time capsule, put it in the old building. When we built our new school in 2011, we removed the old time capsule from the old building and we opened it up. We used many of the artifacts from uh, the time capsule to display, but these documents went into a box that was in um, the principal's office. When I took the new job, I was collecting documents for the 100-year celebration throughout the year, and um, there they were. They were in this box. The documents that we found uh, from the time capsule from Woodfull School from 1922 are significant because we have every reason to believe that they are the only copies in existence of Samuel Woodfill giving an account, a first person account of the events that led him to receiving the Medal of Honor. Samuel Woodfill was the most decorated soldier in World War I and was referred to by General Pershing as a soldier's soldier, meaning he was a model for all other soldiers being brave, courageous, leadership. And it's really leadership is something that Woodfill students are ingrained in, to be good leaders, to be good um, community members. Uh, it's just part of everyday culture here at Woodfill. Woodfill School is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year because the cornerstone was laid in July of 1922. And so 2022 is a good year to celebrate. Yeah, the, the 100 years, this is our 100th year as an elementary school, really important. We're celebrating it the entire year. Um, we have our trophy case as displaying a bunch of different artifacts that we've collected, that we have had, that we got donated from the museum um, and different people in the community. Um, throughout the year, there will be different celebrations. We have our blue ribbon kind of celebration that will kind of coincide with the 100 years. We are going to do a community night where we display all of our artifacts, some in picture form, some in just artifact form. The students at Woodfill were interested in learning more about Samuel Woodfill, and Dr. Robert Woodfill, his nephew, came and visited and talked to the students. He even wrote up what you might think of as a newspaper insert, giving lots and lots of details about the life of Samuel Woodfill. When I received the cardboard box of documents, I was told that they had come from the time capsule, which was opened in 2011, and the time capsule was full of water, which is, it's death to documents. It's fatal for pictures. I have an employee here at the museum who is affiliated with Northern Kentucky University, and he told me, let me take these out to the archaeology department and we'll see what they can find. So he did, and a week later he came back and he said, we've made an astonishing find. We've found 13 pages of Samuel Woodfield's speech. And I almost got emotional because this is the kind of thing that 
historians live for, to find something like this. It's, for me, it's the biggest find we've had here at the fort. We have lots and lots of significant historic artifacts, but this one quite literally cannot be replaced ever. It can't even be reproduced because so much of it is gone. Samuel Woodfill, I think, was, well, I know, he was a self-effacing man. He, he didn't seek out the limelight. And when his wife died in 1942, he went back to Indiana and died there in a house where he was living. Um, and he had some, some renters in that house as well. But he died of natural causes, probably a heart attack. And uh, his body was not discovered for a couple of days. And I find that very, very sad. But, uh, you know, we, we don't pay attention to our heroes sometimes when they get old. And I wish we did more, but that's all. <laughs>